Two Calls Bo Philip and Bo Bobby stood side by side on the doorstep of their father's house. They were brothers, though you would hardly have thought it, for one was very big and one was very little. Bo Philip was tall and slender, with handsome dark eyes and a silky brown mustache, which he was fond of curling at the ends. He wore a well-fitting overcoat and a tall hat and pearl-gray kid gloves. Bo Bobby was short and chubby and ten years old, with blue eyes and yellow curls, not long ones, but funny little croppy locks that would curl, no matter how short he kept them. He wore a pea jacket and red leggings and red mittens. There was one thing, however, about the two brothers that was just the same. Each carried in his hand a great red rose, lovely and fragrant, with crimson leaves and a golden heart. "'Where are you going with your rose, Bo Bobby?' asked Bo Philip. "'I am going to make a New Year's call,' replied Bo Bobby. "'So am I,' said Bo Philip, laughing. "'We may meet again. Good-bye, little Bo.' "'Good-bye, big Bo,' said Bobby, seriously, and they walked off in different directions. Bo Philip went to call on a beautiful young lady to whom he wished to give his rose, but so many other people were calling on her at the same time that he could only say good morning to her and then stand in a corner pulling his mustache and wishing that the others would go. There were so many roses in the room, bowls and vases and jars of them, and he thought she would not care for his single blossom, so he put it in his buttonhole, and it gave him no pleasure whatever. Bo Bobby trotted away on his short legs till he came to a poor street full of tumble-down cottages. He stopped before one of them and knocked at the door. It was opened by a motherly-looking Irish woman who looked as if she had just left the washtub, as indeed she had. "'Save us!' she cried. Is it yourself, Master Bobby? Come in, me jewel, and warm yourself by the fire. It's mortal cold today. Oh, I am not cold, thank you, said Bobby. But I will come in. Would you, would you like a rose, Mrs. Flanagan? I have brought this rose for you, and I wish you a happy new year, and thank you for washing my shirt so nicely. This was a long speech for Beau Bobby, who was apt to be rather silent but it had a wonderful effect on mrs flanagan she grew very red as she took the rose and the tears came into her eyes you little angel she said wiping her eyes with her apron look at the lovely rose for me is it and who sent you with it honey nobody said bobby i brought it myself it was my rose you see he said drawing his stool up to the little stove. I heard you say yesterday, Mrs. Flanagan, when you brought my shirts home, that you had never had a New Year's call in your life, so I thought I would make you one today, you see. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to yourself, me sweet jewel, cried good Mrs. Flanagan, and blessings go with ye every day of it, for your kind heart and your sweet face. Ah, I had a sore spot in my heart this day, Master Bobby, being so far from my own people. But it's you have taken it away this minute with your sweet rose and your bright smile. See now, till I put it in my best chiny teapot. Ain't that lovely now? Isn't it? cried Bo Bobby. And it makes the whole room sweet. I am enjoying my call very much, Mrs. Flanagan, aren't you? <laughs> that I am, said Mrs. Flanagan, with all my heart. End of Two Calls